right, in this video we're discussing how to construct a histogram um, using the following set of data here. All these numbers, they're basically um, students' individual class averages, and we have 31 of them. We want to draw a histogram. I'm going to be doing this problem with the TI-83 graphing calculator. This calculator will make this process a lot more user-friendly than doing it by hand. All right, so let's learn how to do it first. The first thing you want to do when you want to construct a histogram using a graphing calculator is to hit the stat key here. That first key that we're going to touch is the stat key. That key becomes very important in statistics overall, so let's get used to hitting it. We'll hit the stat key. When we bring up the screen here, you see the first thing in the list is the word edit, right? The option edit. So we just hit the number one, it'll open up for us, or we can hit enter. Either one is fine. I'm going to hit enter. And we have some numbers in that first list. So you can see we have three lists in our screen, and if we go over, we can see more lists. We have usually up to six lists with names, and then there's actually some more lists that are unnamed usually. Okay, so we can scroll back over to where it says L1, that first list, and you can see in mine I have data in it. What I want to do is get rid of that data, so I'm going to go up here, I'm going to arrow up, use this purple arrow to go up to where it says L1, and then I'm going to hit the button clear. When I hit clear, nothing happens immediately except for you might have noticed that that little last row, all the numbers disappeared. What I do afterwards, after I hit clear up there, is I'm going to hit this purple down arrow, and when I do that, everything disappears in the list. So we no longer have data in the list, it's empty now. So again, how did I do that? I went up to L1, I hit the button clear, and I pushed down here. All right, good. Once I've done that, it basically empties or clears the list. Now I want to type in all those numbers that I see. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to type in 17 first, hit enter, then 27, hit enter, 28, hit enter. So it's just like using Excel basically, but we have an enter button here. Okay, so 58, press enter, 60, press enter, so on and so forth. I'm going to pause the video here and continue to enter all these numbers. You go ahead and do the same thing, and then when we come back on, um, we'll have the data all on the list ready to be worked with. Okay, so now you can see that I've entered all the numbers into the list. You can see that when I highlight the very last number in my list, 100, it turns up in position 31. And that basically tells me that I have indeed the 31 class averages entered into my calculator. If you scroll back up through the list, you can see that all of them are two digits, so I didn't make a typo anywhere. So it looks like my list is pretty well done. Okay, now once I have that, the next step of the process is going to be to press the stat key or sorry, not the stat key, but excuse me, the stat plot key. So we're going to hit the yellow button here, second, and we're going to press that purple Y equals button above. Okay. Once you come in there, you end up with this stat plot option here. Now, normally your calculator will have all the plots turned off. So you can see plot one is turned off, plot two is turned off, plot three is turned off. You want them to be turned off like that. Um, we're going to open up plot one by hitting enter. So let's hit enter. If your plots are not all turned off, go ahead and go down to option four, hit enter, and turn the plots off that way. You'll hit enter twice. Let's go up to here to plot one. We'll hit enter, and you can see our cursor is blinking on the word on. We're going to turn it on now by hitting enter after going in there. So hit enter, it's on now. We're going to scroll down to where it says type. Now that first picture is a scatter plot, the other one is another kind of graph, which is very similar to that. Then we have the histogram. So with the histogram, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. That histogram is the, um, the one that has the bars there, the third position over to the right. So I hit enter, and it's highlighted. Now I'll scroll down to where it says X list. The X list means where did we enter all those data values into the calculator? Do we put it in list one, list two, list three, etc.? So it says list one. If it didn't say list one, let's say it says list two, you're going to print second and hit the number of the list that you entered the data in. So let's say if I had the data in list two, I would second and the number two, and then my data would be in list two. But in this case, the data is actually in list one in our calculator, so I'll hit second, and then number one, it tells me list one. So the data is now in list one, and that's where the calculator is going to look for these numbers to use in the graph. Then this frequency means how many times do I want each of these numbers to count? Do I want them all to be doubled? So I have two 28s, for example, or two 58s, for example, or do I want each of them that's in the calculator just to count once? If I just want it to count once, I'll leave it as a 1. Oop, you have to be careful there. You see what happened. I pushed 1, and it gave me that symbol Y. And the reason why is because the key was on alpha, the setting alpha. You can see a little A flashing on the cursor. If I type that, if I hit that alpha again, or I take it off, I'll hit 1, 
and there it is. If I wanted to put it back on, I just hit alpha and you see the little A blinking. But that's good. We don't need to worry about any more than that. I'm going to um, go back now to do our graph. So the way we do our graph is we're going to actually just push the graph button here. But in order to get the right picture, we might not be set in the right viewing window. So what we want to do to make sure that the calculator is in the right viewing window is we're going to press the zoom key to graph. And then we're going to go down to where it says stat. So zoom stat is option 9. Press that, and then we get the shape of our drawing. And at that point, we have the histogram on our screen. So the problem is basically done. If you wanted to see how the calculator decided to set up things, we could hit the trace button here. So we hit trace. When you hit trace, there's a little cursor that appears on the top of each rectangle, and it gives you the specifications of the rectangle. It says the minimum of that rectangle is 17. That means that's where the rectangle starts, right? That number there on the left is 17. It says the maximum was 30.8333. Basically, if you subtract those two numbers, right, or if you look at those two numbers, you have essentially what would be um, the span across the category, right? Now, what we want to do next is to arrow over to the next rectangle. That rectangle doesn't have anybody in it, but it's okay because we can see where it starts. It starts at the same 30.833, right, that this one ended at. That one where it says max less than, that's the end of the rectangle. That started at 30.833. If you look at this rectangle, that one begins at 30.833. And basically, if you look at the, um, the span then from this guy starting at 17 and this one starting at 30.833, you have the class width if you subtract those two. Anyways, you can see they kept that width consistent and they go across and you can see where each of these rectangles is actually located at. That would help you number your x-axis if you were doing this by hand. And then, of course, they have the frequency there. It gives you n. n is the frequency, the number of values that are in those categories. You could convert those into relative frequencies if you wanted to, but this is basically what you get in this case. Okay, so that's it. That's your histogram, and that's how the graphing calculator handles it. Okay, so we just saw how the graphing calculator created that histogram. The one thing I want to talk about now is a couple little details. Um, the first thing you want to do when you look at your histogram, you see that it starts at 17. This problem asks us to start at 16. Um, we were unable to force the calculator to do that. There's no setting in the calculator that will make our calculator begin the categories at 16. So we um, really don't have that option here in the, the graph. It'll basically create the graph that it thinks is best based on what we entered into it. Um, so really don't have that luxury. You also notice that they created more than five classes, right? They used, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories, not five. So again, our graph is different because of that. So, you know, if you're doing a problem on the test where it specifies a specific um, detail to the drawing, if they're not telling you to use a graphing calculator, then of course this would be limited usefulness on a test. But of course, it's still a great tool just for analyzing data if you're doing it by yourself. Okay, now the other detail I wanted to mention, or other thing I want to mention just about the calculator itself, is that when you leave here, it's a good idea to turn off that graph that we did. So we did a, a stat plot, we want to probably turn that off. So what we're going to do is we hit the second key again, and go up to where it says Y equals, so hit second, press that purple Y equals key, and then I'm going to scroll down to where it says number four, plots off. So hit enter there, it's blinking at me, it wants me to hit enter one more time. So I hit enter and it tells me done. Now if I go back in there, I can see that second y equals, the stats plots are all off now. And that's where we want to leave the calculator so that when we graph again later, we don't have those plots interfering with our other graphs. So to get out of this whole thing, we hit second quit. So remember, second quit does a lot of things. And if you want to clear your screen after you've quit out of something, just hit the button clear. And that's it.